And now, let's take a look at what's new at BoardGameBliss.com with Nick Meanahan. Hey now, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and it is time for another scintillating episode of What's New at Board Game Bliss. This is where we take a look at some of the newest and hottest games that are either in stock or will soon be in stock at BoardGameBliss.com, our fabulous sponsor. I really encourage you guys to go and check them out. They have an awesome selection of games, some really hard to find games, some of the newest, most popular games. They got it all. I just placed an order today. I wish I could order the entire store because everything looks really cool and I really want to try a lot of different stuff out. First off, let me apologize because I have a bit of a head cold today, so I probably sound kind of weird. I'll also give my standard disclaimer here in that this is not a review segment. I'm not going to be giving you a full commentary on every game that I talk about because I haven't played most of these. But if I have played the game or if I have some little tidbit of information, I'll give you my honest opinion about it. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Soon to be in stock, either this week or next week, is Mysterium from Portal Games, presumably the Polish edition, which I happen to have right here. This game I can comment on because it is a fantastic game. You can watch uh, my review of it on this channel. Now, it will get a re-release later this year in English, I think from Yellow, but uh, really, you know, one of the selling points was that the new edition is going to have a graphical overhaul. This is one of those games that definitely did not need a graphical overhaul. It looks beautiful. It's also language independent. All you got to do is download the English rules from Board Game Geek and you are there. It's, it's really not that difficult. So I think it's a fantastic game. If you don't want to wait until the re-release later in the year, I would definitely encourage you to check it out. Bunny Bunny Moose Moose from Czech Games Editions is a reprint. I never played either this version or the original version. I just know it's like a silly, kind of fun, party-ish style game where people try to pretend to be animals in the woods and hide from a hunter and they they pretend to be an animal by actually like making the uh, like the bunny ears or the moose things of, you know, they have to actually act out what the animals are. I don't know, it seems kind of silly fun. Um, I will say that it's uh, from Vlada Shavadl, who I have to say, I have not been pleased with most of the games of his that I've played, but that guy is, aside from being very prolific, is also very diverse. Every game that he does is completely different from all the other ones. This is definitely an example of that. Here's one I've been excited about for a while. Thief France 1429 from Academy Games. This was on Kickstarter. I almost backed it. And in fact, I think that the version they have at Board Game Bliss right now, probably in limited quantities, is the Kickstarter edition with all the bells and whistles. Um, this is a reprint of a game that's not too old. I think it's only a few years old, but this is like a big pimped out version of it. I don't know. It looks like a big like uh euro game that is probably my style of euro game. A lot of political infighting and setting up arranged marriages and backstabbing. Looks neat. Here's one I never heard of before, 1862 Railway Mania in the Eastern Countries from LMN Plus B. This is an 18xx game. I've never played an 18xx game. It's like a really, really heavy and complicated train game. It's more of like trains mixed with stock market and things as far as what I can tell. it. I mean, just looking at the board and everything, it's very, very complex looking. But these types of games are very, very highly regarded. There's definitely a, uh, a subset of gaming culture that loves them. So if you're one of those people that are in that category, check it out. I mentioned that I placed an order earlier, and one of the items on that order was Room 25 Season 2 from Madagot Games. I have Room 25, the base game, I guess you would call it Season 1. Uh, season 2 is just an expansion, though it's not staying alone, uh, unlike the zombie sides that are named after seasons. But I never got around to reviewing this. I probably should have. I, I never reviewed it because I've owned it for a very long time. I had it since before I started my channel. Uh, but it's a very fun... Uh, people compare it to the movie Cube, which I've never actually seen, but it's about... Uh, people being trapped in like this uh, really evil game show, moving from room to room, and every room is randomized and different. These tiles sliding around and changing constantly. And the only way to play this game is trader mode. You've got to do the trader mode. One of the only complaints I had about the original game, in fact, was that you had all these different characters that looked really distinct. There was like a little girl with a cyborg arm, but none of them had special powers. They were not different from each other, which was like, come on, you have a girl with a cyborg arm and she can't do anything special with it? Well, the expansion is going to fix that and add those special powers in, among other things, and new characters. So I can't wait to get this one in my hands. 
Next up is Witness from Istari Games, and that's a game that I happen to have right now. I own it, but I have not played it, so I can't really give you a recommendation on it. All I can tell you is that it seems really cool to me. The idea is very neat. It's like a game of whispering telephone where you're trying to solve all these mysteries. Like, the whole box is just full of books, these little books that are all these different mysteries, and it's based off of these Blake and Mortimer comics, which I haven't personally read, but it gives it a really interesting art style. So uh, it, it needs exactly four players, which is pretty odd, but I think that if you can do it, it's going to be an interesting experience. I will report back later, but just so you know, Board Game Bliss has it. Dead Man's Draw is a light card game from Mayday Games. I don't know much more about it than that, and it has a light pirate theme, but it seems to be very well regarded. A lot of people have been talking about it. I'm pretty sure there's a digital version of this game. I think I recall Suzanne from Board Game Breakfast doing a segment on it, um, but don't quote me on that, but uh, it seems to be well liked, so you might want to give it a look. Another game I had never heard of, Mangrovia from Zock Zerling, which is a fantastic name. It really sounds like uh, some sort of Flash Gordon villain, but <laughs> this is a really beautiful looking, very light Euro style game from what I could tell about building huts on islands. It's really nice to look at. Sorry, that's all I know. That's all I could say. But I'm intrigued to try it based just on that. Harbor is from Tasty Minstrel Games and designer Scott Alms. I hope that's how you pronounce his name. I've seen his name written a million times, but I've never had to say it out loud. But Scott uh, is the very... Bleh. Harbor is from Tasty Minstrel Games. It was also on Kickstarter, made quite a bit of money for such a small game, uh, which is kind of what Tasty Minstrel has become known for. More importantly, I suppose, is that it is from designer Scott Alms. I've never had to say that out loud, I don't think. But uh, he is more well known for being the designer of the Tiny Epic Blank series of games. Uh, and this one is supposed to be sort of like a simpler version, like a very light version of La Havre. I haven't played La Havre, I've had it sitting on my shelf for a million years, so I, and I've never played Harbor, so I can't attest to either of those things. But I dig the art style quite a bit, I've heard mixed things about the game overall, but I know that there's also a contingent of people that really enjoy it, so maybe you want to find out some more information. Next up is Keyflower the Merchants from Game Salute, and I have Keyflower right here. It's not my copy of the game, it's a friend's copy. Um, he brought it over, wanted to play it, and I had heard a lot about it. It's very, very highly regarded. I think it's in the top 100 games of all time on Board Game Geek, and I was very impressed with it. I don't typically like really dry Euro games, and it's definitely a dry Euro game, but the mechanisms are really smooth, and I've only played it once. I'll pr he left it with me so that I could eventually review it, and he's <laughs> this is the only place he plays games anyways. Uh, but I really don't feel comfortable reviewing it now. I'll probably have to play it at least a couple more times, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it was pretty cool. And the Merchants adds Merchants. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know too much more about it, but there's a couple different expansions. This is one of the latest ones, and just like the base game, very well regarded. Grog Island from Pegasus Spiel looks like a family-style dice rolling game with a pirate theme. More specifically, it's a pirate theme that's pretty interesting because the pirates, I guess, have retired, and now they're investing and in opening shops and making infrastructure at the island that they've settled down on. I'm probably making it sound way more thematic than it is, but I thought that that was pretty neat, and the game looks good, too. And last, we have Rally Fally from Hutch! Exclamation point. I always like to include a kid's game because there are a lot of kid's games for sale at BoardGameBliss.com. They are not left out, so uh, there's a lot of parents with up-and-coming gamers might want to be on the lookout for those. And Rally Fally seems interesting because it is like a magic carpet race with really neat uh, eye-catching components, which of course is a, uh, a big help when you're trying to get kids involved in gaming. So if you're a parent, you might want to look at this one. Well, that's it, people. I want to thank my sponsor, BoardGameBliss.com, yet again. I really like doing these videos. I know they're just kind of like commercials. I mean, we'll just be honest there. But I have fun talking about all these new games. And some of these are games that, even if I haven't heard of them before, now I'm really interested in them. And hopefully, you are too. Have a good one.